As time goes on, the evolution of football takes its natural course. There have been many changes in the game over the years, but one that was a major hot topic during the 2023 offseason was the NFL's running back problem. Running backs have not only never been paid less, but they are now devalued more than ever. This didn't just happen over the past couple of years. No, no, no. With the way the game has been going, this has been a long time coming. And if this issue didn't begin recently, when did it start? Some point to Todd Gurley's massive contract as being the catalyst that started all this, but actually, I think it goes back to the early 2000s. But wait a minute, that was when the position was at its peak. And that's true, running back was arguably the most important position on offense. Teams built their offenses around running backs some way more than others. And in 2004, the league would witness one team suffer the deadly consequences of doing so in the most unusual way. The NFL was about to change forever when the Miami Dolphins and Ricky Williams joined forces, forcing one man to carry the ball on the ground at a rate never quite seen before or especially since. But first, how did this accidentally historic partnership come to be? On March 9th, 2002, the Dolphins finally got their guy. They completed a trade for running back Ricky Williams. In case you didn't know, Ricky Williams is one of the most celebrated college football players ever. He won the 1998 Heisman Trophy, as well as the Doak Walker Award two years in a row. You could make the case for him being the greatest player in Texas Longhorn history. History. After his college career, the next step was to enter the 1999 NFL Draft, and in a shocking twist, he wasn't the first running back taken off the board. Williams already felt he should have been the first overall pick because the type of career he had, and now he's not even the first running back taken? But what ended up saving the draft for him was the infamous trait. Mike Dicka, who was entering his third season as the head coach of the New Orleans Saints, traded the rest of their draft picks to select Williams, as well as a first and third the next year. New Orleans, uh... First, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh round picks. <laughs> what? This was the first time one player was the only draft pick of an NFL team. Then you had the infamous ESPN magazine cover with Williams and Dicka pose as the bride and groom. And of course, rapper Master P's organization No Limit Sports negotiated one of the worst contracts ever. One that was mostly incentive based. I'll put it like this, it was a 7 year, $11.1 .1 million contract with salary incentives potentially worth up to just a little over $68 million. But it's important to remember, Ricky Williams did ask for that contract. Why? because he wanted to earn his money. While that was very honorable, it wasn't the best business decision because in his three years playing for the New Orleans Saints, Ricky Williams only had one where he played in every single game. And if dealing with injuries wasn't already enough, after 1999, a whole new regime came in. It's safe to say they were pretty annoyed with not having any draft picks and they didn't think they were getting much value out of the guy that all the draft picks were traded for. And on on top of all that, Williams wasn't happy in New Orleans either. Teammates and media thought he was a tad bit strange, not only for usually keeping to himself, but also conducting post-game interviews with his helmet on and avoiding eye contact. Williams was later diagnosed with social anxiety disorder, so a trade for both parties seemed best. Saints running back reveals to our correspondent and producer Sean Pamphlon that he suffers from a disease called social anxiety disorder. And it comes out that I'm strange and that I'm weird and that, that people don't like me here and that everyone has a negative opinion of me. Something, something's wrong and I think the fact that I know what's wrong now it makes a big difference. The Dolphins acquired Ricky Williams in a 2002 fourth round pick from the Saints in exchange for a 2002 first and fourth rounder as well as a conditional 2003 third rounder, which later turned into a first round pick after Williams' first season in Miami. And for the first time in his career, he looked like the pro running back everyone was expecting him to be. Ricky 
Becoming the 2002 NFL rushing champion with just a little over 1,800 yards, he averaged 115 yards per game. He also rushed for 16 touchdowns and finished fourth in Offensive Player of the Year voting, was voted as an All-Pro for the first time in his career, and made his first Pro Bowl. While this was looking like a pretty solid deal at first, little did anyone know that it was all beginning to crumble just after a season. While rushing Rushing for a little over 1,300 yards and 9 touchdowns seems good on paper. It was not only a step back from the previous season statistically, but guess which were the only categories that improved? Both rushing attempts and touches. In a two-year span, Ricky Williams carried the ball more than any other running back in NFL history, and I'm not even mentioning the times he caught the ball. Despite rushing for less yards, he actually carried the ball more in 2000. 2003, as well as leading the league in touches, which means both rushing attempts and receptions. And let's not forget, he only had 12 less touches the previous year. Despite having a solid group of wide receivers and tight ends, Williams was made as the Dolphins' entire offense. Now, if they were so good, why was this the case? Well, let me just name off the quarterbacks he played with during this period. Jay Fiedler, Ray Lucas, Sage Rosenfels, and Brian Greasy. It's safe to say they didn't have a Pro Bowl caliber quarterback, but hey, it's all good as long as they're winning, right? They did end up posting back-to-back -back winning seasons. The problem? They didn't make the playoffs. 9-7 in 2002, as well as 10-6 in 2003 weren't good enough. So imagine doing all that work, still posting a winning season, but not playing in January. Ricky Williams was drained entering the 2004 offseason. Knowing he was the entire offense, basically, he went to the Dolphins front office seeking a new contract. According to him, their offer was insulting. Finally, I was finally up for a contract renegotiation almost and we started the, the conversation with the Dolphins and their first their first offer you know when I looked at the offer I was like do they not realize that they need me to win games you know and that they put all of this pressure on me and they give me the ball every play and they think I'm supposed to look at this and be like okay you know and I'm a sensitive guy so I was butthurt but that was part of my decision of like I'll show <laughs> I'll show you how you do. <laughs> so were they going to get a quarterback to maybe help him out finally? They did end up making a move, trading a 2005 second round pick for AJ Feely. So now you see the crap Ricky Williams had to deal with. My gosh. 2004 wasn't gonna be any different. Already looking for a reason not to show up, he violated the NFL's substance abuse policy for a third time testing positive for marijuana. Once you fail a third time, it becomes public, and with that announcement pending, in late July, just a few days before training camp, Ricky Williams announced his retirement. The whole narrative of him leaving the game exclusively to get high is nothing more than a myth. In Instead, he left to heal a damaged body and feed a searching mind. During his year off, he healed his body and ended up studying medicine, and eventually came back in 2005, where he would play with the Dolphins up until 2010. But the 2004 season was still a disaster, going 4-12 as well as firing their head coach Dave Wanstead during the season. So you see, even in an era where running back is arguably the most important position, building a round one can have dire consequences. And I know there were plenty of running backs that continued to flourish during this era as well as more than a decade after the 2004 season. Having a premier running back was still a major need for a while, but in my opinion, Ricky Williams abruptly leaving the game for one of the major reasons being overuse became the very first cracks and what we know 
known now as the running back problem. Today, giving a substantial percentage of the cap to a running back is a bad football move for any organization. The 2004 Dolphins proved that, trading all of those picks to get Ricky Williams and then overusing him, not helping him out properly, only to have him abandon you. At the end of the day, nobody wants to see an NFL game where the running back position doesn't exist. But at the end of the day, it's also a business. Running back is now the lowest paid position in the NFL, and it's not really close. Right now, what's happening to running backs isn't fair. We can have a whole debate about why running backs should get paid more, why they should be more valued, why they shouldn't, yada yada yada. But to me, what isn't up for debate is the origins of the problem. The cracks of the running back position began to form when Ricky Williams made the right decision to retire in 2004. I just read the writing on the wall that's of saying the universe is telling me it's time to do something different. And so again, I, 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 I walked away, called up the NFL and said, you know, I'm good because I'm going to do something else. Thank you for, for the opportunity and bye.